of uh, mechanical engineering uh, i welcome you all again for this uh, guest lecture on role of computational mechanics in manufacturing process by having uh, dr v dinakaran professor and head uh, center for applied research chennai institute of technology chennai as uh, our prime speaker today uh, once again i welcome you all uh, the very first part of this uh, session uh, i request um our hod uh, mr s uh, sundar selvan uh, to render the welcome address among the gathering please sir yeah very good morning to you all it's my great pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries and i welcome our management and our beloved principal sir uh, renowned vice principal ma'am and dean of academics and all learned faculty members and our student friends and especially uh, resource person of today's guest lecture dr v dinagaran sir uh, from chennai institute of technology and once again i welcome you all for the guest lecture on the topic of uh, role of computational mechanics in manufacturing process i once again welcome you all thank you thank you sir uh now i request uh, mr c uh, s charles uh, assistant professor department of mechanical engineering uh, to introduce uh, the chief guest among uh, all the participants uh, please sir a very good morning to one and all gathered here uh, it is give me uh, immense pleasure uh, in introducing our chief guest dr v dinagaran uh, professor and head center for applied research chennai institute of technology chennai india he expertise is uh, skills in engineering uh, finite element analysis and uh, computational flu fluid dynamics and composites welding uh, additive manufacturing and various other fields dr v dinagaran is the author of abundant articles in peer review journals as well as he is the author and editor of various handbooks in research areas uh, published with elsewhere taylor and francis and uh, springer he is an uh, associated editor in journal of robotics and control and the editorial board member in american research journal of biomedical engineering thank you uh, thank you so much sir uh... now i request our uh, chief guest uh, uh, professor uh, dinakaran sir uh, to take over the session uh, please sir and uh, the stage is all yours thank you yeah so thank you so much uh, i thank you so much for uh, uh, inviting me to uh, render the guest lecture on role of uh, computational mechanics in manufacturing process and primarily i thank the management and principal dean hod and the organizers for uh, Uh, conducting such wonderful uh, guest lecture series, and also I thank our management and uh, principal HOD and dean for giving me an opportunity to present the lecture in R S E Engineering College on behalf of Chennai University College. And the role of computational mechanics. in manufacturing process this one of the fast growing field in the current scenario so my lecture will be like this so we are going to see what is the need to go for computational mechanics and how it is being different than the experimental analysis and how to mimic the physical manufacturing process into a computational system and how this will be highly useful in solving day to day problems okay. so these are the objectives uh, which will be imparted on the participants to enhance their knowledge so experimental best best neymar club approach and computer what is computational mechanics and welding and finite uh, finite analysis 
additive manufacturing and latest such simulations. So uh, we should know uh, what will be the role of engineers or researchers or scientists once uh, they are uh, getting into the field of work. So once uh, uh, they are entering into their job, their role may be to find out the solution for the physical problems. So physical problems is uh, nothing but the problems which are arising from different areas, different areas. For example, uh, uh, if you want to, if you want to save your country from the nation, then the defense will have some problems. If the human being are in need to uh, live in the society comfortably, then they will have some problems. And if the industry is going to produce some materials or produce some products, then it will have some problems. So the problems which are being out from the industry or from defense or from society are called as physical problems. Okay. So the physical problems may be coming from these sources. And as an engineer or researcher or scientist, you need to find out the solution for these physical problems. Okay. So how to find out the solution for the physical problems? The physical problem will also be called as a real world problems. Okay. So you people should understand what is physical problems primarily. The problem which are coming from society or industry or defense is called are called as physical problems. Okay. And in the earlier days, in the earlier days, uh, the problems have are uh, the focus only has been given for the problems which are coming from defense. Okay. So you do you 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 should know that. Uh, the earlier days inventions, earlier days inventions and earlier days research were mainly focused on defense or focused for uh, defense purposes in order to save the country from the nation. And for example, so uh, the uh, aircraft, the aircraft has not been invented for uh, transportation purpose primarily. They have been or it has been invented only for serving the defense. How the, the there is a, uh, a very big uh, interesting story behind the invention of aircraft, okay. uh, and especially the uh, jet engines. Okay. So in the earlier days, uh, I, during the Second World War, during the Second World War, uh, the aircraft was using only the IC engines. So uh, I hope most of you from mechanical engineering. So the internal combustion engineering engine was only used in the aircraft. Okay. So what the Hitler wanted to do, the Hitler wanted to uh, win the race. Hitler wanted to win the race. For that, what he has done, he had uh, called all the scientists, and all the scientists uh, were put in a room. All the scientists were put in the room. And uh, you know, in the earlier days, and now also, most of the uh, uh, Nobel Prize holders and most of the inventions have been done have been uh, done by uh, Jews. Okay, so uh, you know that uh, uh, Hitler uh, uh, is uh, very much. I mean, he was with very much anger with Jews. I don't know what is the real fact behind that. But the Hitler called all the Jews, especially the scientists, and they have been uh, put inside a room. And only one instruction was given to them. When you come out from this room, you should come out with a solution or with an engine which should do or which should produce more thrust than the engine what we have in the aircraft. Okay. So this is the instruction uh, put before them. And also he told that whatever you want, that will be supplied. Whatever you want, that will be given to you people. But 
if only you come out with the solution you will be allowed to live else you will be shot out okay so this is the thing which has been put on uh, on the side okay like so like that so we do not want to investigate whether the uh, story is correct or not but the thing is the inventions have happened only for different purposes in the alien days it's now the aircraft what we uh, the jet engine what they have developed is being useful for human capital to travel from one country to other countries in a uh, faster way okay but nowadays equal importance is also given is being given for the uh, societal polymers and nowadays the ICT and the central governments are taking much initiative uh, to solve or to get the solution for the social problems this importance was not given the earlier days okay right the physical problems uh, has to be solved and for solving the physical problems uh, two methods are uh, 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 being used are being uh, familiar among the researchers you can uh, go for uh, experimental analysis you can go for experiment analysis or you can go for uh, modeling okay so you you will have problems in your hand you are having problems in your hand the problems might have come from society or defense or, or maybe from industry to find out the solution for the problem you need to go you need to, you can use either uh, experimental analysis or you can use modeling okay so experimental analysis there is a well defined one there is no substitute for uh, experimental analysis so experimental analysis means uh, you have to uh, construct the uh, experimental setup you have to construct the experimental setup then you have to uh, run the experiments you have to run the experiments then you have to uh, read the data you you have to read the data then you have to analyze the data you have to analyze the data then you have to uh, come up with the conclusion how the parameters are uh, vary how the parameters are vary so this is a some standard procedures which are being followed while solving any problem using experimental analysis okay so we have physical problem in your hand then the physical problem uh, has to be for solving the physical problem you, you can follow either uh, experimental analysis or you can go for model if you are going for experimental analysis first step is you have to construct the experiment setup the second step you have to uh, run the experiments third step you have to read the data fourth steps you have to analyze the data then you have to uh, come up with the conclusions how you are conducting experiments in the uh, laboratory classes okay the second way or the other method for finding the solution for the physical problem or real world problem is modeling okay so modeling is purely uh, based on some assumptions modeling is purely based on some assumptions okay so uh, at the end of the modeling at the end of the model you will have some governing equations the governing equations you will have uh, the governing equations may be either a differential equation or integral equation or integral differential equations okay then the the governing equations has to be solved the governing equation has to be solved okay uh, for example if the governing equation is very simple if the governing equation is simple, so if uh, when you go when you look into the governing equation may be either uh, if, if you look into a, look into as a, a differential equation it may be either partial differential equation or ordinary differential equation ordinary differential equation or partial differential equation right and most of the engineering cases will have uh, partial differential equations right partial differential equation how because in the ordinary differential equation, the uh, there will be a limited number of things. So there will be uh, uh, only one dependent variables. Okay, but in partial differential equation, there will be more than one uh, dependent variables. More than one dependent variables. Okay, and uh, hence in the most of the uh, engineering problems will have the uh, partial differential equation as, as the governing equation. Partial differential equation as the governing equation. And if the uh, partial differential equation, if the partial differential equation is very simple if the partial differential equation is very simple you can solve the governing equation with the known formula what you have learned from the mathematics 
So, for example, if you have, well, let me take a, a, a simple governing equation. Okay, if you take uh, d squared dx by dt squared plus some uh, y equal to zero, d squared dx by dt squared plus y equal to zero, this is a simple governing equation. So, you can the uh, this equation can be solved by using the standard uh, mathematical formula what we have learned in the uh, school days of engineering. Okay, and if you look at the simple equation, d squared y by dx squared plus uh, x equal to zero. So in right hand side, the equation is having only zero. Okay, then this this type of equation will have only one solution that is called uh, what we call uh, axillary solutions. It will have only axillary solutions. Okay. Suppose the equation is like this, d squared x by dt squared plus uh, x equal to e power y or e power x. Then something is in the right hand side the equation and uh, the solution for the equation will be the summation of uh, axial solution at the particular level. Summation of axial solution particular level. Then the particular level you can uh, find out by, uh, you, you, you may use particular is equal to 1 by uh, d into the particular e power x something. By substituting that, you can find out the uh, solution for the uh, governing equations. But as I said in engineering, most of the uh, equations are partial differential equations. And also, especially the more non-linear, non-homogeneous second-order partial differential equations. Okay. So most of the equations in engineering are non-linear, non-homogeneous uh, partial differential equations. Okay. So uh, to solve this uh, partial differential equation, partial differential equation, it is uh, tough to uh, uh, solved by using the mathematical formulae what you have learned from the school days and uh, uh, doing your engineering. So for that, we need to uh, find out, we need to find out a uh, method or need to find out some solution or find out some way to solve the problems. For that, what we can do, we can we make use of the computers to solve the problems. We can make use of the computers to solve the uh, equations. Okay. Then, when something or when some equations are being solved with the help of a computer, then that type of modeling or solution will be called as numerical solution or computational mechanics. Numerical solution or computational mechanics. Okay. So let me uh, explain clearly. We have we will have physical problem in our hand. For the physical problem. Or to solve the physical problem, you can use either experimental analysis or you can go for modeling. So modeling may be of two types. One is analytical modeling and the one is numerical modeling or computational mechanics. If the, in the modeling, you will have the governing equations, that means the physical problem will be converted into a mathematical equation, mathematical governing equation. Physical problems may be converted into a mathematical equation. For example, you consider a spring mass system. A spring, the you have a spring that your mass is hanging under that. Okay. Then you can easily uh, conduct experiments to measure the displacement when some force is applied. Okay. So, so this is one way. You can conduct experiments analysis to find out the uh, stiffness of the uh, particular spring or the maximum displacements you can find out uh, by conducting experimentation. And parallelly, you can have the equation. So if you know the equations, the governing equation for the spring mass system uh, d squared x divided by d squared plus k uh, k x okay plus uh, k by m into x equal to zero. So this is the uh, governing equation for the spring mass system. Okay, so d squared x by d squared plus k by m into x equal to zero. This is the governing equation for the spring mass system. This is parallelly, in, instead of conducting experimentation, you can conduct the uh, you can solve the governing equation and you can obtain the solution. If the governing equation is very simple. You can solve by using the mathematical formula what you have learned from the uh, engineering or school days. Then that type of modeling is called as analytical modeling. Okay. Then if the governing equation is very complicated, if the governing equation is very complicated, you can't solve by using the formula what you have learned. Then you have to make use of computer to solve the equations. Then that type of modeling is called as numerical modeling or numerical simulation or computational mechanics or computational modeling. Okay. So, this is how the computational mechanics has evolved in solving the physical problems. Okay, so 
you should be clear. So either researcher and students and teacher, you, you are going to uh, uh, serve for the society. You should know how the computational mechanics has evolved to solve the physical problems. Okay. Okay. Then uh, I said, why we need to go for uh, computational mechanics? I, I told how the computational mechanics has come out. How the computational mechanics has come out. And why do we need to go for computational mechanics? Why do we need to go for computational mechanics? Okay. Uh, the regular method of arriving the process parameters, like so, uh, what uh, uh, might have been followed in the earlier days is when you want to uh, design a common, when you want to design a common, the common must have been designed. The common must have been designed, and upon testing. Uh, if it is found that the component is not satisfying the purpose, okay, you are designing the component, then you are uh, testing for the purpose. If the component is not meeting your requirement, then what you will do, you have to throw out the commons. You have to throw out the commons, and you have to modify the design. Then again, you have to produce the component. Then you have to go for testing. Upon testing, if if the uh, purpose is met then you can go for compatibility. If the purpose is not met, then what you will do, then the common has to be thrown out. Then again, you have to go for, uh, you have to go for uh, 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 design, then manufacture, then testing, then uh, you have to analyze whether the purpose will be solved or not. So this process will take much more time and it's a time consuming process. It will much time and time consuming process. Okay, and see nowadays no one is having time, whether industry or man or researchers, who whoever it may be, they do not have time. They are always with the time constraints. They want the immediate results. If something is carried out demand, yes. Yeah, any disturbance, sir? No, sir, no, sir. You can continue. Yeah, okay. So we do not have time. Okay. So for that. We need to have some methods. We need to have some better methods or better alternative to external answers. Okay. And the computational mechanics will be one of the alternate methods. One of the alternate methods. So I, I, uh, the, uh, the computational mechanics is not a substitute for external analysis. Okay. Computational mechanics is not a substitute for external analysis because seeing is believing. Okay. External in explanation. Uh, whatever we are seeing, that is believing, but computational mechanics we cannot see. So most of the things are based on assumptions. Okay. So computational mechanics is an alternate method. Uh, it is an alternate method to find out the solution for the physical problem, but it is not a substitute method. Okay. So that you should clearly understand. Okay. So the computational mechanics will be uh, used to uh, used to. Uh, avoid the experiments what I was saying earlier. Okay, so as I, as I said earlier, you are designing the component, then you are you are manufacturing the component, then you are going for testing. Upon testing, if it is not met, the common will be uh, thrown out. Then you go for, go for design, redesign, remanufacturing. Then you will go for retesting. Okay, so this entire process may be eliminated when you go for completion methods. Okay, so again, I am saying one point. The computational mechanics is not a substitute for external analysis. It is an alternate method. It is an alternate method. Okay. Then, how this alternate method or how computational mechanics is uh, helping us to solve the physical problems? Okay. This computational mechanics will help you to uh, do better experiments. How better experiments? How better experiments? So, you can, you can. Come up with a limited number of parameters. You can come up with a limited number of parameters, or you can come up with a limited number of designs. The limited number of designs can be executed in the system, and the system you can test it, and whether the strength is achieved or not. Okay. Once the strength is achieved, you can go for instead of conducting large number of trials. Okay. So I told you, you know when you are going to uh, design a new when you are going to manufacture new product. New product, at least you may, you may have 20 or 30 tiles to properly bring out the products. 
Okay, when you go, when you use for computational mechanics, you, you can, the 30 trials can be done in the system itself, and you can come up with five or five or six designs, and the five or six designs can be can 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 be taken forward for physical manufacture. Okay, and the physical after the physical manufacture of five or six components, you can go for testing, and among which you can choose one of the best design. Okay, so by using the computational mechanics, we can do better experiments. See, almost 24 trials have been eliminated by following the computational mechanics. By following the computational mechanics. Okay, so let me uh, let me explain this uh, uh, computational mechanics by using another one uh, example. Okay, so what you will do, you are going to uh, weld a component. You are going to weld a component. Okay. So, uh, to weld the component, so you should have you should have proper uh, welding speed, welding current, and say another parameter, uh, you may have is uh, a stick of distance, the distance between the uh, plate and the uh, torch, welding torch. Okay, so this may be the variable parameters. Okay, so in order to have the full penetration or uh, a very good uh, welding cell. Very good welding cell. What you will do? What you will do? You are going. You will uh, fix the parameter upon trial and error basis. Upon trial and error basis. First, you will uh, set up some current. You will set up some speed. Then you will set up some uh, stick of distance. Stick of distance. Then you will conduct the trial. Okay. So upon conducting trial, uh, then what you will do? You will conduct. You will cut a specimen. You will cut a specimen. Then you will uh, polish the specimen. Uh, polish the specimen. Then you will etch the specimen. Then uh, you will see in the uh, uh, micrograph whether the full penetration has been achieved or not. Whether the fusion is proper or not, you will see. Okay. If the fusion is not proper, then you will you will eliminate the trial. Then you will you will increase or decrease or modify the current. Then modify the welding speed. Then you will modify the stick of distance. One second you will go for conducting experiments. Then you will again you will uh, cut the specimen. Then you will uh, see the uh, macro structure whether the full penetration penetration is achieved or not. If it is not, then you, you will throw it. So like that, at least you would conduct twenty-seven to fifty trials. Minimum twenty-seven to fifty trials. Or more, large number of trials. You, you may say large number of trials to find out the parameter which may yield correct fusion. But this is possible. This can be executed for the traditional materials. So, what is the, what are traditional materials like aluminium or uh, stainless steel? You can you can uh, conduct this this one. You can use this procedure. Okay, because. This uh, trailers is a low cost material, I mean, low cost material, you can go with that. But nowadays, we are using very costly material like aluminum, like titanium, uh, inconel, zirconium. These are very costly materials. If you look at the titanium, so per kg, you need to pay, you need to spend uh, 7,000 rupees. Okay, so inconel also. Uh, same and when you, uh, when you look at the zirconium, it is costlier than titanium. But this material cannot be used as the procedure what I has said earlier. Okay, so this high cost material cannot be cannot be uh, taken forward as like we have taken forward the traditional materials. So a new method is highly useful to reduce the number of trials. That method is computational mechanics. Okay, the computational mechanics will really eliminate the large number of trials. Will eliminate the large number of trials. Okay. So uh, I hope you, you are very really clear why do we need to for we need to go for computational mechanics. Okay. Because the, the uh, it, 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 there is a need to uh, 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 clarify the doubts. Everybody is saying that we are analyzing something. 
what for you are analyzing the analysis itself it is not believable one whatever you you analyze the uh, you go for section analysis or you go for thermal analysis or you go for uh, uh, fluid flow analysis whatever may be that the analysis analysis itself cannot be a correct solution okay you need to well read the research you need to well read the research i told you, you know the experimental analysis is believable one. so experimental trials are believable one but computational mechanics is not believable easily you cannot believe the computational solutions the computational solution is only believable when it is validated how it can be validated the computer results can be validated by two things one by analytical solution second you can uh, validate with the computational solutions okay so uh, sorry x model solutions okay. the computational solutions can be validated by using either analytical solution or using x model solutions okay. so you got validate that without validation the your the solution what you have found out through the computational mechanics is not at all believable one okay so uh, the people who are doing research also if you simply you may say you are saying that you are say you are, you are analyzing uh, some fluid flow phenomena uh, in ansys or ansys fx water maybe the analysis solution itself is not enough to go for publications is not enough to go for uh, provide a con concrete solutions it needs to be validated it ought to be validated with the with analytical solution or experimental solutions then only the results of computational mechanics are believable okay hence i want to say the computational mechanics is not a substitute for experimental solution it may be an alternate method to find out the solution for the a physical problems okay so uh, what is computational mechanics computational mechanics is a branch of applied mechanics which uses which uses the knowledge of uh, computer science and mechanics which uses the knowledge of computer science mechanics and it is uh, generally defined as it is a science of practicing practice of obtaining approximate numerical solution using the digital computer This is a digital computer is termed as computational mechanics. Okay. So uh, computational mechanics uh, may be used to solve the thermofluid problems, or used in thermodynamics, or used in electrodynamics, or used in weld 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 welding and additive manufacturing. Okay. So it will take it will take the particular name particular name. If you use the uh, science of uh, or if you use the computational mechanics in the welding then it is called as computational welding mechanics if the computational mechanics is used to solve this section problem then it is called as computational sectional mechanics if 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 it is used in uh, if used to solve the fluid dynamics problem it is is the computational fluid dynamics if you used to solve the thermodynamics problem it is set as a uh, computational thermomechanics if it is used to solve the electrodynamics problem it is solved as computational electromechanics okay the computational mechanics is a common name it will it will it will take the name where it is being applied where it is being applied okay like computational mechanics computational electromechanics computational thermomechanics computational uh, fluid mechanics so it will take the particular name in the field of applications so what are the steps to be followed when solving any problem using uh, computational mechanics okay so i as i so i already said you have to convert the physical phenomena the physical phenomena or physical system into a partial differential equations the physical system has to be converted into a partial differential equations then you have to use the physics you have to use the physics to formulate the uh, complaint systems okay so you should know how to extract the physics from the mathematical equations you go to extract the physics from the mathematical equations okay so uh, that uh, by utilizing that you need to uh, develop a mathematical model which is the replica of the physical model that i i, I said you know uh, we are we are we are having spring mass system we are having spring mass system 
and when this previous uh, when, when you are applying some force on the mass or when you apply some displacement on the mass so how the system will behave you have to bring the system, bring a mathematical equation or you have to system in terms of mathematical equations so carefully it has to be done if it is not properly converted if the physical system is not properly converted into mathematical system then your entire work will be faced okay so it has to be carefully converted okay then uh, it has to be uh, you have to uh, you have to go for discretization okay so how to go for uh, discretization how to go for discretization okay so uh, i told you you know uh, we have a uh, governing equation in our hand we have computer but the computer does not know the governing equation. The computer knows zeros and ones. The computer knows zeros and ones. And we need to convert the governing equation into the understandable form of a computer. How the, uh, it can be converted into an understandable form? Then the computer can understand zeros and ones, or we can say the algebraic equations. The algebraic equations. Okay, then the governing equation, which is in the form of partial differential or integral, whatever may be, we need to convert the governing partial differential equation to algebraic equation, since the algebraic equation is only understandable by the computer. Hence, we need to have some methods. We need to have some methods to convert the partial differential equation into algebraic equation. Then some methods are being used that are called numerical methods. Okay, so what are these famous or standard numerical methods being useful in converting or doing discretization of the governing equation to algebraic equation are finite element method, finite volume method, and finite difference method. These are the three standard methods which are being useful in converting the partial differential equation into uh, algebraic equation, which is the understandable form of a computer. Okay, so uh, let us see what are these three methods: find difference method, find element method, and find volume method. Okay. Find difference method does not follow any physics. Does not follow any physics. How do I say it does not follow any physics? Or I can simply say, as an engineer, you should believe three equations. One is conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy. So these three principles are essential. And the world is also existing because of only the, these three fundamental principles. If any system which violates, any system which violates these three fundamental principles will not be existing in the world. And it, 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 it may not be existing in the world, and it, it may not be true also. Okay, so these three equations, three principles are equations conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. Without these three principles, nothing will be existing in the world. Okay, nothing will be. So, as an engineer, you should not, you should, you, you should not believe the magic or water. Maybe if some person is converting something into something, so you should not believe it. Because if these three equations are clear in the world, then how you can believe which is uh, something uh, 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 being produced without consuming anything? Okay. Then how do I say the fine difference method does not follow any conservation principle? This final difference method do not follow this conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy. These three principles will not be followed by the fine difference method. The fine difference method simply uses the Taylor series expansion. It will use only the Taylor series expansion to solve the problems. To solve the problems. Okay. So that we know, you know, so 1 plus x whole power n equal to 1 plus something back to there will be some factor into one factor there will be something you have some equations okay that tail series expansions is being useful in uh, being used to convert 
the governing equation and the analytic equation by using find of slope. Whereas in find element method and find volume method, this principle will be followed. This principle will be followed. Okay. So in find element method, the entire domain. So because of the time, I am not uh, going into detail. The the entire solution they will be divided into uh, subdomains called the elements, and the I uh, uh, so. Uh, then the problem will be solved. But there is a finite element method. So the entire solution will be divided or discretized into a finite elements and it will be solved. Okay. Whereas in finite volume method, finite element the finite finite difference method, you cannot you cannot uh, uh, sorry, finite element method, you cannot see naturally the usage of conservation principles, but in finite volume method, you will be able to see uh, through naked eye. How? Because uh, you will so in find volume method, the entire domain will be divided into some subdomains called as volumes. In the volumes, each volume will be checked whether the conservation principle is followed or not. Okay, so physically we will be involving in the process of uh, checking that. So you, you can better experience the follow up of a conservation principle, the follow up of conservation principle uh, while using the find volume method. Okay. So this is how the discretization is done and how the governing equation is converted into algebraic equations. Okay. So I said, uh, so we mean the results have to be verified, either experimental results or analytical results or both. Both. If both are uh, used to validate the uh, solution arrived from the computers, then it is well and good. Or at least one of the uh, results should be used to uh, find out the solution for the problems. Okay. So in this two manufacturing process, I have planned to uh, discuss one is welding and one is additive manufacturing. So uh, uh, so these two manufacturing process will be concentrated and how the welding, how the welding process is mimicked to uh, let the, uh, to uh, to uh, to take the advantage of computation mechanics and how the additive manufacturing can be utilized to uh, get the solution of the so use the advantage of computation mechanics. So as I said, uh, the uh, computational welding mechanics, mm, yes, computational welding mechanics uh, is the term when the uh, computational uh, mechanics is used to solve the problem of welding. Okay. So, uh, this is a weld pool. Okay, so when um, uh, uh, when metal is uh, subject to welding process, so your heat source, see, your heat source uh, has moved from this end to here. It has moved from this end to here. When the heat is moving, the um, it will be melted locally. It will be melted locally, and the this zone is called as welding zone or fusion zone. Welding zone or fusion zone, and the metal will be melted. Metal will melt, and the this is one metal, uh, and this is another material. So this metal is melted up to the melting point, and it will locally become as fluid. It will be locally become as fluid, and it will be merged together. And upon cooling, this will yield a homogeneous joint. This will yield a homogeneous joint, and. And uh, this uh, this is the uh, lesser power source, and this is a local weld pool. This is a weld pool. Okay, so this is a weld liquid uh, weld pool. The liquid weld pool will be yeah, with a diameter of few millimeter, but it is a very complicated uh, columns to analyze. It. It's a very complicated uh, uh, phenomena. It's a very complicated phenomena, which is which cannot be easily uh, solved. So, uh, in the near the near the fusion zone, what we have is the heat affected zone. This heat affected zone, okay. And this is the unaffected base metal. This unaffected base metal. Okay. So the power power source, the heat is uh, flowing from the top. Okay. So, as I said, the same is a fusion zone, heat affected zone, is unaffected base metal, water maybe. So at the fusion zone, the temperature will be good. The temperature, the temperature will be high at the 
uh, freezing zone and it is brought up to the molten metal molten temperature uh, this melting point so molten metals are it will be they, it will be it will be uh, elevated more than the melting point of the particular material material and then uh, the temperature will keep on decreasing until the best metal or pre metal okay see the temperature is is in is decreasing linearly uh, from the uh, well to the pure metal okay so a uh, lot of parameters are uh, uh, the uh, reason teaching this uh, fundamental is you should uh, to use the computational mechanics you should know the fundamental uh, physical system clearly okay the physical system should be understood clearly okay then then only you see what you are going to do while using computational mechanics you you are going to convert the entire physical system into a governing equation okay so how the governing equation can be achieved is it is not not easy process to get the governing equation to run the physical system if only you clearly understand the physical system or physical principles you will be able to convert the physical system into a governing equation for that you should clearly have the knowledge okay okay so the arc efficiency okay see uh whatever the whatever be the heat whatever the may be the heat which is falling at the material or whatever it may be the heat which is coming from the power source and may not be properly utilized to make the material always there will be losses what are the losses the losses may be due to the conduction may be due to the convection due to the radiation okay so you have to clearly understand whatever the heat which is coming out from the power source may not be utilized or cannot be utilized to achieve or to melt the material okay always there will be losses the losses may be due to the modes of heat transfer like like conduction convection and radiation so in order to account the losses you need to bring the efficiency Hence, you have to use the efficiency called arc efficiency to to account the useful heat. Okay, so if the hundred percent is the uh, total heat produced, hundred percent total heat produced, then you have to uh, you have to uh, deduct or you have to subtract the uh, losses. Okay, Q is the uh, heat transfer to electrode. Okay, electrode from the building or building or then. It's a Q is the Q is the radiation and convector like convection losses, convection losses, and N is the proportion of the heat output from the R column that is transferred into the workpiece. Okay. Q W is the rate of heat absorbed by the workpiece. Okay, so these are the losses. These are the losses, and only this efficiency will be utilized to uh, convert the molten coal into the. Uh, absorb the material to um, you you can uh, for converting the water okay okay so this is in terms of uh, the elect the maybe the electron used in the building may be either consumer electron or non consumer electron okay so if you use a non consumer electron if you use non consumer electron this is the uh, loss if you use consumer electron so that will be and eliminated eliminated and losses will be uh, like that. the efficiency can be calculated like this okay. and also there are uh, different parameters a lot of parameters uh, in the building so like uh, uh, arc heights or the distance between the uh, torch to the torch to the uh, what uh, to the plates then a welding current and polarity welding current and polarity and welding speed and gas what is the gas you are using and what is the diameter of electrode and what is the uh, preparation and contamination so arun sir sir so uh, how long i can go sir sir uh, for for you sir uh, for my convenience okay okay right sir right, right. so okay so shall i take another uh, uh, 25 to 30 minutes will it be okay Okay, fine, sir. Okay, fine. okay. So these are the uh, welding parameters. Okay, so welding parameters. 
so welding parameters also oh, like uh, i told you know yeah welding current and uh, current okay welding current okay so how uh, the uh, direct current electromagnetic uh, direct current electrode positive and ac alternating currents okay so these are the three uh, standard uh, um, uh, what we call welding uh, polarity is being used over the welding process okay. so this is being chosen upon how the welt pool has to be prepared for welt pool has to be so if you want to have the, uh, uh, the i mean the uh, deep welt pool welt pool then you have to use a direct current electromagnetic okay so electromagnetic means the the electrode will be acting as a negative okay so then uh, the dcep direct current electrode positive so okay, electrode will be acting as a positive terminal that will be as acting as a positive terminal and and so this is a, you can have the, the uh, shallow uh, penetration no shallow penetration so when when you use the when you want to have and the cleaning action the cleaning action like that when when you want to uh, weld the aluminum uh, material then essentially there you need to have the uh, acid cleaning action acid cleaning action the the reason for having the acid cleaning action is there will be some deposition of material while welding the aluminum while welding the aluminum so in order to clean the electrode then you have to go for actually alternative current alternative current uh, then uh, that will, that uh, uh, aluminum can be welded properly okay so uh, you have to properly choose the welding current and the polarity during welding process the effect of welding spool welding speed okay so welding speed plays a major role in the uh, welding okay so uh, see one thing you want to understand the amount of energy the amount of energy uh, will be same there will be no variation in this okay the welding speed can be used as the as very the parameter to meet our purpose to meet our purpose okay the if you if you increase the welding speed then it will reduce the heat effects okay see when you increase the uh, welding welding speed the heat input will be uh, uh, re reduced when the heat input is reduced the heat are falling on the material for the particular uh, area will be less then the uh, melting will happen very less accordingly you will get the depth of penetration okay then if you want to if you are increasing if you want to have if you want so uh, uh, if you are uh, reducing the welding speed if you are reducing the welding speed the heat input falling on the particular uh, area particular area will be high if the energy falling on the material is high certainly more material will be melted and the fusion can happen properly okay so the welding speed has to be chosen properly okay welding speed has to be chosen properly and you need to spend you need to spend lot of time to fix this parameters fix this parameters and these parameters can only be fixed up upon tailander method tailander method okay hence this tailander method can be effectively divided up or can be thrown out by using combination methods okay then shielding gas see when you use the uh, titanium or inconel or zirconium material it is highly reactable to the reactive uh, to the environment okay so that has to be uh, properly uh, has to be properly uh, the uh, the welding pool has to be properly uh, protected the welding pool has to be properly protected in order to protect the welding pool uh, in a good way then you have to create an inert atmosphere you have to create an inert atmosphere the inert atmosphere can be produced by the utilization of shielding gas okay so the shielding gas will also have some effects 
the type of shielding gas what they are using to protect the molten fuel and the the amount of gas or what is the uh, uh, amount of gas you are using to protect the molten fuel also playing a major role okay see as i said the metal is locally melted when the local metal is locally melted it will become it will be as liquid it will be, it will be as liquid when you when you make the air flow more or when you increase the uh, when you are give the when when you give the high amount of air flow this air flow may create a turbulent action turbulent action because of which and the melting pool may be disturbed the water pool may be disturbed when the molten pool may, is being disturbed it is not a very good uh, thing to achieve proper penetration hence the welding speed has to be proper uh, sorry the uh, flow or uh, the flow of uh, gas the amount of gas should be chosen properly the type of gas should be chosen properly if they are not properly chosen it will also have some effects okay then electro diameter and preparation okay so electro diameter the angle so the mostly uh, commonly 30 and 120 degree angles are uh, found to be uh, uh, good in good doing welding upon the uh, previous experimental trials and the uh, bubble temperature okay so this uh, uh, depth to width ratio and penetration can be fixed or can be decided by carefully choosing the electro diameter also. okay so these are the parameters which are needed to be decided upon a child and method for which you need to spend a lot of time and energy if you do not follow the computational mechanics so welding is a uh, multi physics problem it's, it's not as uh, easy problem welding is a multi problem it, it involves fluid flow, it involves heat transfer, it involves uh, suction problems. Okay, so I said, you know, it's a locally it becomes liquid, even though it, it exists for a few seconds and it is of few mm. It is a it's a very complicated phenomena. It's a uh, the, the very phenomena. So it's a, a multi-physics problem. So a lot of forces are coming in effect. Uh, electromagnetic force, Laurent force, a Marangoni effect. So, a lot of forces, hard pressure will be coming into effect too. It's okay. So, a lot of uh, physical phenomena are getting involved in the welding process uh, by which it, it is a multi physics problem. So, it's, it's the same I, I said, you know, so it's a, it involves a thermal analysis, it involves thermal analysis, it, it involves mechanical analysis, it in, uh, involves metallurgy. It involves fluid dynamics problems. Okay. So, uh, so the, all the uh, phenomena has to be considered properly. All the phenomena has to be, all the phenomena have to be considered properly to uh, properly solve the problems. Okay. So, uh, uh, the uh, uh, microstructure may be altered if you are not properly uh, choosing the parameters. Metallurgical effects may not be proper. And the strength of the weld, the strength of the weld may, may not be good. The strength of the weld may not be good if the proper parameters are not properly chosen. And if the fluid problems, if the uh, molten bolts are, uh, molten bolt is disturbed. And the uh, stress measurements, the residual stress. So thermal analysis, that means the heat transfer, you know, heat transfer has to be properly analyzed, heat transfer. Okay. So uh, how the uh, what we call um, the losses, how the losses are, are playing, um, uh, are being uh, useful. Uh, that also has to be studied while while analyzing the uh, building problem. Okay, so so hence uh, building is a very big uh, multi physics problems. So all the uh, concept has to be properly understood before converting the physical system to a mathematics system. Okay. So, so different regions, how uh, the forces are uh, uh, being 
uh, uh, being effective in the uh, welding. So how this uh, structure of welder pool will be? Okay, as I said, you know, so it's a local welder pool. It's a local welder pool. So it will move in this way, in this way. Okay, the heat also move in this way. That's a welder pool. So as I said, it will have the Marangoni force. It will have Laren force. It will have buoyancy effect. The arc pressure, the arc pressure will be will be influencing the uh, molten pool. The aerodynamic drag force. The aerodynamic drag force will also be uh, uh, influencing, will be influencing the uh, molten pool, and the laser losses, uh, radiation from the plasma. Okay, so all the losses will also be uh, coming in effective, and these are the uh, things uh, will be designing the section of the building. How the section of the building. So, what are the specific issues during welding? welding? So, uh, during welding, for fusion zone will be forming, will be formed. Uh, flow will be taken place in the liquids, and fusion zones will be uh, fusion zones will be solidifying. Okay. So, the time steps to be adapted to handle the phase change properly. I told you, you know, uh, you know, physically. Um, when uh, heat is falling on the material, it will be conducted physically. Okay, but when it needs to be expressed in terms of mathematical equation, how the heat is conducted in the material has to be uh, has to be uh, mimicked into in terms of mathematical equation. And when the computer solves the problem, computer solves the problem, the time has to be properly defined. The time steps has time steps how to be properly designed or defined to take care of the concepts what happens in the physical process. So in physical process, we know how we, we, we have thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity, we know that the ability of the material to conduct the heat. So the water uh, made square Kelvin. Okay. But in the computer, we will have you will say there's no thermal uh, conductivity. Apart from the thermal conductivity, that is one thing is called one thing is the called alpha. Okay, alpha is called the thermal diffusivity. Alpha is called as thermal diffusivity. Okay, so how fast the heat is penetrating the material is defined by alpha. Okay, so this fastness, this ability of the heat to penetrate the material, is understood by the physical process. But how to Import on the computer or how to import in the uh, numerical simulation to take care of the stability of the material to penetrate the heat. So, for that, the time step will play a major role. Okay, so the time step has to be properly defined when solving the problem. So, there are a lot of, uh, lot of cases based on the time steps in solving, when solving the uh, computation analysis. Like, a explicit method, implicit method, and crank nickels method. Okay, so these are the three standard uh, methods to take care of the time steps. Let me repeat the methods explicit method, implicit method, and crank nickels method. These three are the standard methods with which are having the ability to take care of the time steps. Why I need to take care of the time step? The time fully, you, you properly take care of the time steps. You will be able to incorporate or you will be able to mimic the physical process what happens when you are doing welding or whatever may be the uh, process. Okay, so you need to take care of this. And also the stability. I said, you know, explicit, implicit, and canonical method can be effectively chosen. By, by the help of stability criteria. There is a concept called the stability criteria. It is a very, very important one. The stability criteria will help you to choose this explicit, implicit method and, and current interest method. So these three methods, stability methods, uh, stability criteria, and time steps, are, these three are very important when solving the problems using computational mechanics. Okay. 
So then a multiple training forces. I told you know multiple training forces. Uh, buoyancy force is coming to affect you. Our pressure is coming to affect you. The aerodynamics track force is acting on that. So a lot of things are happening. So that they have to be properly taken care. Then then Greek independence and time step independence are important. So Greek independence and time independence. So what are that? Okay, what are that? I told you, you know, the so the domain has to be uh, split into uh, different finite volumes or finite elements. You want to divide that. Okay. Then the what uh, the uh, things will, will be uh, solved is when consider when considering the finite element method, the solution will be available at only at the nodal points. The solution will be available only at the nodal points. Okay, so so the nodal points when 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 you uh, uh, divide the domain into number of elements and divide the number of elements, then the two elements are meeting at a point, that point is called as nodal point. And we will, or uh, this software will solve the problem at the nodal point. The solution will be available at the nodal point. Solution will be available at the nodal point. Okay. Now, you can, you can divide the uh, domain with more number of elements, or medium number of elements, or very less number of elements. Okay, so these elements can be chosen. Number of elements can be chosen. Or number of elements are it, it, it will also be set as meshing or discretization. Okay, you can name like this. You can divide the number of elements, or it may also be called as meshing or discretization. This meshing or discretization will be preferred based on the thing what we are going to measure or based on the physics what we are going to import on the particular parts. Okay. So uh, so let us consider I am going to I am going to uh, I am going to uh, apply a heat in this in this portion and apply heat in this portion. We'll apply heat in this portion the heat the uh, the uh, heat transfer more dominant for the particular area around this portion than the ends than the ends okay so let me you you, you clearly clearly understand i am applying heat here I apply heat here the applied heat may influence highly influence for certain portions certain portions then the uh, uh, far away ends, then the far away ends. Okay, then the area where the area where the heat will be highly influenced, influencing will be having more meshes, will be having more meshes than the area where it does not have influence. Okay, so this is called meshing. Okay, this is called meshing. Then what is grid independence and time independence studies? That means when you change, when you change the mesh size, when you change the mesh size, the solution will not vary. You have to, you have to come to a point where the solution will not vary even if you change the mesh size. So that study is called grid independence study. Okay, the point, or you, you will come to a point where the uh, where the solution will not change even if you change the message. So that is called a grid independent study. Okay, so that has to be ensured here. Then conservation equations. Conservation equations. I said three conservation equations: conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. These are the important conservation equations. The conservation equations are already existing. Already, they, the scientists have found out that conservation of mass, momentum, energy are available in the, in the uh, textbooks, available in the literature. Then, what is what is your role? What you are going to do? Okay, so the given equations: conservation of momentum, 
this ado into do b dot t plus o v bar into do del v and minus del p s l and new del plus the particular equations okay this is the uh, is a velocity okay this is a pressure okay this is a, the rho is a uh, density we have and this is one term called source term okay so this is called tension tension this is called conductive and this is pressure tell me pressure 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 gradient pressure gradient okay this is the diffusion diffusion parameter this is a diffusion gradient and this is called source okay so this equation is available in the software this equation is available in the textbooks and what you are going to do when you use this equation in computation mechanics is you can alter this equation you alter this issue yes, the source term can be altered the source term can be altered based on your physics or based on your problems you, you can modify this particular term and this particular term can be this equation is available in the software and this ac can be defined as a user defined equation a user defined function in the software by by you and the problem can be solved by any uh, analysis software okay so it's a convention of equation for thermal field so thermal field <clears throat> this is nothing but four years law of heat connection this is nothing but four years law of heat connection so this equation you might have studied in the heat transfer itself heat transfer itself in the heat transfer heat and mass transfer first unit itself this equation is given then how this equation is being used for researchers to solve the problems yes only the sk terms the source terms this only this source term has to be modified so i told you know the governing equation is 5.4 okay so this equation what i this is same equation so i have expanded here the same equation the same equations which is motor is given here with a field flow so uh, i have expanded this uh, expanded this and the different directions the x direction y direction z directions the source term the source term, you see you know the su has to be defined based on the problems so such as pressure gradient if you include the pressure gradient then minus rho by dx you have to replace the su by minus rho by dx if you want to include the body force then you have to you have to replace the su with this equations if you want to include the porosity formation you want to include, if you want to have the uh, porosity formation for phase change then you have to uh, you have to um, substitute or you have to replace this su with this one su okay let me clearly uh, mentioning this equation is already available in the software only thing is you want to you should know how to make use of uh, other other uh, uh, parameter other equations or other physics to replace this as okay. so uh, i i have tried to build a titanium titanium building so what are the uh, difficulties in what are the standard methods used to build the titanium atom beam building laser beam building and uh, laser beam building then plasma arc building and convectional optical building these are the methods being useful in titanium building what are the difficulties of titanium is highly reactive material and uh, it is uh, easily they can combine with nitrogen and oxygen hence uh, uh, carefully the precursors have to be uh, considered uh, during the welding process so plasma arc building so it's a plasma arc power source so uh, the electric the work pieces act as like positive and electric is also negative negative so dcem direct current electric negative is being mostly used in the plasma recording process and the heat will be flowing from the uh, torch to the uh, work piece work piece so the, the external setup so external setup has been used which is available in the uh, national institute of technology this properly has been placed to conduct uh, my experiments my experiments and uh, so these are the building parameters which has been used to conduct the physical trials okay so i told you, you know the uh, uh, molten pool has to be properly properly uh, uh, protected molten pool properly if it is not properly protected it will be really, it will be reacting with the environment and the uh, uh, the that will not produce the uh, sound well hence uh, yeah, hence yeah, yeah, 
a trailing shield has been designed. It's a new trailing shield, which is going to be uh, uh, patented soon. It's a new trailing shield we have uh, we, in our lab uh, with the uh, core research, with the help of uh, uh, my way, Dr. Chivasham uh, Mugam and uh, Dr. Sagarayan Sami, and uh, my core researchers like Karthoraj, Dr. Karthoraj, and Dr. Stephen. So uh, we, we have developed this uh, uh, new uh, trailing shield and which is going to be patented soon. And this new sailing seal has been uh, has been uh, effective to produce a very good sound pad. Okay. So after using the uh, tailing seal, we are getting we have got a, a very good uh, uh, sound weld. Okay. So before using tail seal, we got this one. So this uh, this welding uh, color is not at all not at all uh, allowed. Not allowed. And this is the quality well, which is accepted by the research community. So uh, uh, we have chosen uh, uh, two or three parameters, welding current, welding speed, and the arc length has been fixed as eight channel. So 50, uh, 55, 60 ohms current has been chosen, and 250, 270, 300 uh, uh, mm per uh, minute welding speed have been chosen for uh, uh, the welding details and these are the weld beams uh, obtained to the welding process. Okay. And during the welding, the temperature has also been measured. Because during welding, if you, you cannot measure the <coughs> uh, you can't measure the welding temperature at the weld pool because it will be very high temperature. So, so uh, what we have done, we have chosen around 6 cm from the center of the weld pool, weld pool and we have uh, we have used a year thermometer to measure the temperature. Okay. So uh, the after welding, so we have cut the uh, specimens. We have got the specimens, and and uh, we have uh, seen we have seen uh, the penetration of the welding. Okay. Then uh, we found that we found that the 250 60 amps current to uh, 60 amps current at 250 amps welding speed uh, has. Yielded has yielded a full depth of penetration. Hence, that parameter has been chosen for uh, chosen for uh, what we call uh, creating the uh, bud weld joint. Then we have measured the uh, stress, stress by using cold drilling method. Cold drilling method. So, how the stresses are uh, produced in the welding is when the metal is when the metal is heated when it's heated. The molecules will move away from the uh, more molecules will try to move because according to the kinetic theory of gases, when it, when uh, when something is heated, the molecules will, will get some extra energy and the molecules will try to uh, move away or will try to uh, run faster. Okay, when the molecules are trying to run faster and faster, so say because they, they say this is the weld pool, this is the weld pool. So this when when molecules are heated. When the molecules will have more energy and it will try to escape from there and some of the molecules go and after some place after some places after some distance this mol this molecules which are here uh, may not feeling the heat may not feeling the heat and they may not be moving then they are moving moving away okay so hence this moving molecule will try to push this molecule which are stationary which are stationary so then there will be a fighting between the uh, these moving molecules and the mo molecules which are stationary. Because of that, a yes, cess will be existing. That cess is called thermal cess. That's accessible thermal cess. Okay. So we have measured the thermal cess also. Okay. So then this uh, distortion, see, if you see, you look at the figure, you may forget. You may forget. So one thing you are able to see the dis distortion. Okay, the distortion also has to measure. Uh, using the CAO machine, which is available in the uh, Defense Research and Development Organization in Bangalore, GTRE, Gas Safety Research and Development, uh, Gas Safety Research and Establishment. Okay. So, this also is a very costly machine. So, XRD resolution machine, machine uh, equipment, which uses the uh, FRAG's law to find out the such in the uh, particular common. Okay. So, this also available in the uh, GTRE DRD lab. In so now <clears throat> we have uh, understood the physical process. Then how the physical process can be 
used to convert convert the computational uh, uh, physical process uh, has to be uh, converted into a governing equation. Governing equation. Okay. So for that, so in welding, the heat is uh, welding. The heat is involving. Heat is involving. Okay, then how the heat will be flowing to the material? How the heat will be flowing into the material? Okay, so that has to be said. Okay, so heat is coming and it is flowing to the material. And what shape the heat will will go into the material? Okay, so that has to be predicted properly. That has to be predicted properly. So the model which explains the flow of heat into the material is called heat source model. Okay, then the heat source model has to be carefully chosen. Okay. So already the available heat source model, double epsilon heat source model, conical Cassian heat source model, and modified television heat source model are available in these literatures for welding. Okay. So this uses the equation C, the, the double triangle heat source model, this heat source model is like this. They, uh, the uh, person called it, said that the heat is flowing the material in the two ellipsoids. In the form of two ellipsoids, the heat is flowing the material, is he said. Okay, and the equations are different like this. And uh, C.S. Wu, who is, the, who is the professor in China, has said that the heat is flowing like a cone, like a cone into the material. The heat is flowing into the cone in the material. He said that. Okay. And uh, another person, he modified the uh, heat source model, modified the heat source model, and he told that it will not go like a cone, it will go like uh, this truncated cone. It will go in like a truncated cone with the material. Okay. Then, in our research, we found that the uh, weld shape. The weld, uh, weld pool shape is not uh, either uh, cone or uh, level epsilon. We found that this is like a parabola. Parabola. It's, we found that it's, it's like a parabola. Okay. Then we developed a new heat source model. We developed a new heat source model, and the new heat source model we have developed by using a parabolic Cassian heat source. It's a, it's a, a parabolic Cassian heat source or parabolic Cassian distribution has been replaced to develop the heat source model. Okay, and the heat source model, uh, we, we this is the distribution parameter R naught of z is equal to A z square plus B. The distribution parameter equation we have assumed this equation, and we found we upon solving this equation, we found that the parameter of A and B, the A and B are the constants, A and B constants, B and constants are uh, constants have been found out by solving these equations by solving this equation at the top and bottom. Okay, and see, this is a parabola. Okay, in the parabolic heat the parabolic distribution has been uh, used to uh, define or uh, to mimic the physical. This is physics, right? This is a physical system. This is a physical system, and I am converting the physical system into uh, mathematical equation, mathematical learning equation. So I, I used to develop a mathematical model called the Dinakhan's model. So uh, in my name, it has been published, and it is available in the literature. And the Dinakhan's model has been developed, developed, and the Dinakhan's model has been uh, has been uh, derived by using the uh, uh, triple integral, right? Triple integral, by using the triple integral, and this is the equations. Q, this is the equations. What we have developed, developed to uh, represent the Dinakhan heat source model. So this is the equation, and where the AV AV is represented by this equation. Okay. So this is the heat heat source model, which will be the replica of the uh, physical process. So we use the final console, multi physics, now the final uh, software to solve the uh, equations. Okay, so what I have done, so I, I told earlier, you know, so this equation is available in all the softwares, all the analysis softwares. The only thing is the source term. I told you, you know, the source term. So here, QV is the source term. The QV source term is going to be replaced by this equation. This equation is being substituted in the in the Q, in the terms of in the in the place of QV and this equation has been solved by the console multiplex software and I want to substitute the boundary conditions. But the equation has to be solved by using boundary conditions. So we have used the boundary conditions to define and, and the losses uh, the natural boundary conditions, these are the essential boundary conditions to solve the equations. Okay. And 
uh, we have developed a new uh, key transfer coefficient, mean current, so Nusselt number. So we have found out the Nusselt number correlation from the uh, standard data book, and we found out yeah, there's a the Nusselt number. We derived in Nusselt number, Brandel number, and we uh, from the Nusselt number we found yes a new key transfer coefficient, a new key transfer coefficient. Okay, the heat transfer coefficient has changed in terms of watt per meter square Kelvin, and the thermal conductivity will be in terms of watt per meter Kelvin. Okay, so the heat transfer in terms of watt per meter Kelvin has been derived by using by by uh, having the uh, correct uh, Nusselt number correlation. So this has been brought out from the uh, the box I told you in a trading seal. That from the trading seal we have derived this, and the final mass I told you, you know this in the center heat transfer the heat transfer will be uh, here in the uh, uh, gradient, gradient, the heat gradient will be high at the uh, at this, this region. When you move away from this center, there will be none, not much more uh, uh, influence of the gradients. Then, uh, course mass has been chosen in the, uh, in the far away from the end, far away from the center. And the six centimeter from the uh, center on the either side uh, has been chosen with the uh, uh, fine mesh. So, what will happen if the uh, uh, Mercedes are uh, uniform everywhere. Uh, there will be a lot of computational times which will waste our uh, uh, physical processing time. So assumption has to be uh, have to be considered, and when you consider the uh, pro properties of the thermal temperature dependent thermal properties, and the organ gas flow is uh, considered as uh, incompressible and uniform uniform flow. Okay, and the temperature distribution has been. Uh, calculated by using the uh, already available heat source model, uh, three dimensional conical heat source model, and modified three dimensional heat source model, and Dirac's model. These three source model, heat source equations have been close to solve to find the thermal temperature distribution. And it is found that the Dirac's model is correctly uh, predicting uh, the temperature distribution than other two models. Okay, and the temperature see, so uh, is. Uh, there is the last one, PGHS. Okay, so is the uh, uh, temperature, uh, uh, temperature peak temperature uh, measured by using these three uh, uh, heat source models, and it is found that Dinagar's model is correctly predicting the temperature. Okay, so this is the weld pool. The weld pool, <coughs> weld pool uh, predicted by the uh, three different uh, heat source models, and and the weld pool. Uh, this is the uh, physical weld pool uh, from the experiments, and the physical weld pool measured from the, the experiment is correctly predicted by the Tenagans model. Okay. So, on the temperature contours, temperature contours, so the parabolic fashion has been added by, uh, by uh, computational mechanics. Uh, we use the Tenagans model than the others too. So, this is uh, made here. And the temperature distribution uh, predicted with the Reynolds model, and see the temperature uh, is getting constant only it, it teaches the uh, quasi static uh, quasi static process quasi static, and see the temperature is maintained uh, uh, constantly, but when the temperature in the heat source when the heat source reach, uh, reaches reaches at the uh, end of the plate, see the temperature is suddenly rising. The reason for uh, the suddenly increase of temperature is while the oil, oil, uh, the heat source is here, it will have uh, uh, area of normal to the uh, surface for heat transfer. But here there will be no area further to uh, for the uh, heat transfer enhancement. Hence the heat is uh, the temperature is suddenly rising from the constant to certain extent. Okay, so. So see, <coughs> the this is the experimental experimental uh, uh, macrograph obtained from the obtained from the uh, experiments, and this is these are the uh, macro 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 profile uh, predicted from the predicted from the computational mechanics, and see uh, both are uh, almost matching uh, with the experimental results. Experimental results. And the, uh, we have measured the resources, predicted the stress measurements. And uh, angular distortion, the distortion also predicted by using the Nagar's model, and it is found that. So I said, you know, analytical modeling, you know, analytical modeling. So analytical modeling, 
So uh, we have developed the analytical equation. We have developed analytical equation. So this is the uh, standard uh, equation uh, of the temperature, temperature. And I have uh, replaced the uh, del Q, del Q with the Dinagans model. Del Q with the Dinagans model, you substituted uh, the value of del Q here. The, see, this is the uh, uh, Q0 is the uh, uh, parameter or the equation has to be substituted from the Dinagans model. And the, we have substituted and the uh, three dimension three triple integral and an equation has been arrived that equation has been arrived, arrived. the C equation has been solved by using matlab albeit solved using matlab and the temperature has been arrived the temperature distribution has been found see the temperature is predicted this is one, one plane and this is another plane the temperature is predicted as like we have uh, predicted from the uh, experimental as like we have predicted from the uh, uh, simulation. Okay, see, so we, we are uh, correctly uh, able to get this. In the experimental, the top will to be width is 6.6 .6 mm, and analytical, we found the 6.82, and simulated, we found the 6.3, and bottom width is found at 1.4 through experimentation, and it is calculated as 1.2 and simulated as 1.7. Since the computational mechanics will, will be highly useful to. Uh, predicts the uh, to uh, eliminate the number of experiment types and see the research such machine the XRD X analysis and firm and holding method and see the uh, firm method is also on bar or the computational method is on bar predicting the results uh, with the XRD and the XD, HDR. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, research machine and uh, fast I think to uh, five minutes I want to uh, wind up. I just uh, go through the additive manufacturing. So additive manufacturing is a very uh, cost-effective and uh, less phase stage and rapid development process. So in that, the 3D model will be developed and 3D model will be uh, sliced, will be sliced slice and, and layer by layer, the material is ordered to generate the economics. Okay, so there are the different technologies. They are, they are used in automotive industry, aerospace industry, consumer, medical, industrial and research. And the, there are different processes, periodic process, laser sintering, laser melting, and fusion combustion molecule clip, and the volume molecular metallic uh, and alloys, metals and alloys, powders, and thermoplastics, and ceramics materials, and glass materials are being utilized to uh, uh, produce the particular component to additive manufacturing. So um, I am skipping because of the uh, time, time concern. And, uh, the limitations of additive manufacturing are strength, surface finish, speed, and cost. Okay, these are the uh, limitations of the additive manufacturing methods. And in fusion deposition modeling, so there will be a uh, there will be a build, there will be pool, a pool of material pool, and that material pool will be flowing, and it will be, it will be melted, it will be melted through a heat source, and layer by layer, the material will be ordered like this. The material will be ordered like this. Okay. And so serial method, and uh, so it uses the photo polymerization. This is the photo polymerization, okay. And uh, the material is uh, produced. This uh, uh, so I got some disturbance. So select laser melting. So the uh, 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 material gets melted, and layer by layer, the material is ordered, and the record shape is being generated. Mm -hmm. So what we can uh, see, so we see the material used, so this is the uh, distribution of material being used in the additive manufacturing. <laughs> and see, uh, this common is being, being made up of 18 parts. The common is being made up of 18 parts, but it's a, a field nozzle. But uh, now it is it is made up of a single common. It's a single, so we throw a 3D printing. It does not have any uh, connections. It is made up of uh, it is a sim single component rather than uh, 18, 18 parts. So, uh, okay. so that is section. It's one of the uh, very good area how it is being into. So uh, let is section. So the <clears throat> uh, instead of instead of using the uh, bulk material, so obviously bulk material. Bulk material, you can uh, they, they, you can 
go for latest section. You can go for latest sections, and the latest section can be tested uh, whether it will be able to produce the uh, uh, synth on board with the uh, bulk materials or not. That can be designed, and we can go for testing. So, so we have used uh, and uh, ants and abacus uh, to uh, get the synthetic uh, uh, cube, get the cube of cube. It's a solid material. Solid material, and we found the deformation. We found the deformation through ants and abacus. And you see the latest section. What we have, this is the physical, uh, the physical material. What we have, uh, what we have uh, manufactured, what we have manufactured, and the same uh, these things have been designed in the software. Have been designed in the software ants and abacus, and we have this. We have been subjected to a compressive load, compressive load. The different see the different uh, patterns. How as like how they have designed the physical uh, manufacturing. Uh, have been designed in the uh, 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 software, and they have been subject to compression analysis. And see, the deformation has been analyzed. Has been, has been analyzed, and how the deformations are uh, coherent with the uh, with the one of the solid one. Okay, so by you by by use, you can avoid the uh, lot of external types. Okay, so there's many sections and. Thank you. Sir, thank you. I can take up any questions if it is there. Sorry, I have taken uh, uh, more time. Uh, because of uh, time concern, I wiped up, uh, wiped up uh, this one, I wiped up uh, additive manufacturing. So, what the additive manufacturing itself is, it will take another one and a half hours. Hence, I have. Uh, wait. Sir, uh, yeah. That topic is for another one day. We, we sure, we will, we will make it, sir. We will make it one day, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For your knowledge on the uh, role of role of computer mechanics uh, in manufacturing process with us. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you so much. Last but not least, uh, next may I request Mr. C. Kavir, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, to propose the vote of thanks. Please, sir. Thank you, Arun, sir. Yeah, very good afternoon to all. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to propose a word of thanks for the guest lecture on role of computational mechanics in the manufacturing process. First, I express my sincere thanks to the management, principal, vice principal, and dean of academics for their continuous support and motivation to organize such uh, technical events. On behalf of uh, the Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and of course, on behalf of all the participants, I render my heartfelt Thanks to our resource person, respected Dr. V. Dinagaran, for sharing his insights on computational techniques and their roles in the manufacturing process. Uh, without any doubt, I would say that we had a great and informative session today. Thank you so much, sir. I also extend my thanks to all the participants from various colleges who made this event a grand success. And I thank all the staff members in the department uh, to conduct this uh, one day, uh, sorry, uh, technical session in a successful manner. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Participants, if you have any queries in, the, in that role of computer mechanics, uh, send the mail. You will see. Yeah. I will send yeah, you can send mail and uh, you can, uh, uh, you, you can uh, WhatsApp me also. Okay. Uh, so if you have any doubt, uh, the researchers, those who are working on uh, uh, this field, you can you can contact me through WhatsApp or you can uh, mail me uh, using the credential. Uh, 